Hey everyone, Matt here. In this video, we're going to look at three things that you can do to get a nice, big, full sounding drum recording right from your home studio, no matter how big or how small it is. These three tips are easy to implement, but are so important. In fact, I use these three things all the time in my own drum sessions that I do from my studio, and they help me get professional sounding results that sound like this. You've maybe heard that to track big and pro sounding drums, you need a massive and beautiful sounding live room. But let's be honest, whether you're a producer or a self producing artist, most of us do not have easy access to a big live room like this. And we're using smaller rooms, maybe in our homes or in a small studio space. So we'll look at how we can record drums in a small space to still get big and pro sounding results. Before we jump into it, do me a favor, hit the like button, the subscribe button for future videos. I really appreciate it. First step is deadening the room. We're abandoning all hope of using the sound of the room to our advantage in the recording because most of the time a small space is not going to sound very flattering. Your drums are likely pretty close to walls and corners, and the reflections from the drums are just going to sound messy in the recording. And so to deaden the room, we need to turn to acoustic treatment. When I say acoustic treatment, I don't mean this. These thin little foam pieces that you'll see online are not going to do a whole lot for you besides maybe deadening some of the higher frequencies. What we want to do is find thicker panels because the thicker the panel, the wider the frequency range that it will be capturing. And so panels that are two to four inches thick are going to work well in this case. You'll want to place the panels at different reflection points on the walls and corners around the drums, especially using thicker panels in the corners to help capture a lot of the buildup from lower frequencies, which often happen in room corners. Here's a quick look at my session space at the moment. You can see that I've got two inch thick panels on the walls surrounding the kit and some thicker bass traps in the corners that are actually triangular wedged shaped panels specifically for corners. Directly behind the kit is actually a window and since I didn't want to permanently cover the window with a panel or anything, I hung really thick blackout curtains over the window to cover that really reflective surface. You may also want to hang a ceiling cloud for treatment on your ceiling to help with some higher frequencies, but these can be a little bit more expensive to do. I experimented with my setup and now don't use a ceiling cloud, so it's not the end of the world if you can't set that up. You'll want to lay a nice thick carpet on your floor as well to help cover the reflections down there. While you can order thicker acoustic panels like these online, they're actually relatively cheap and easy to make. All you'll need is some wood for the panel frames, some fiberglass or glass wool for the actual panel insulation, and some fabric to cover them up. They cost around $30 or $40 worth of material to make. Second step is creative mic placement. Since we're removing the room sound from the equation, we need to lean into using close miking for capturing the actual drum sound. Close miking is going to capture a bit more of an isolated drum sound, and you may be tempted to use your overhead mics to also capture some of the drum sound, but we actually don't wanna do that. We don't really wanna capture the sound of the full kit in the room, because remember, we're trying to eliminate the sound of the room from the equation. Instead, we're gonna use our overhead mics for solely capturing cymbals, and I'll show you how we do that in just a second. I use a pair of small diaphragm condenser mics for my overheads to capture the cymbals on both the left and right side of my kit. And I use small diaphragm condensers because they're focused and directional. You'll notice that the mics are pointed to the outside edges of the cymbals to help capture a washier and shinier cymbal sound and less of a muddy sound if they were pointed directly over top of the cymbals. Make sure your overheads are equidistant from your snare too because that will help with any phasing issues while recording. And a side note, a quick trick that you can use to measure that snare to mic distance is just with a headphone cable. Just set the headphone jack on the snare and mark the distance along the cable with your thumb. So here's how those overheads sound raw on the kit.
Obviously, there's a lot of bleed from the drums, so it's not a very isolated cymbal sound. But if we bring in a high-pass filter here to cut out a lot of the low end from the drums, we get ourselves a nice isolated cymbal sound. So this is all fine and dandy, but we're still left without a room sound to help glue our drums together in the mix. Which brings us to this last mic placement tip, the wildcard room mic. I know I said that we'll be eliminating the room sound from our recording equation, and that's mostly true. We're actually still going to record a room sound, but we're just going to be creative about how we do it. We want to capture the drums in a way to make them sound like they're in a bigger space than they actually are. To do that, we're going to set up a room mic or a pair of room mics inside a closet or behind a big piece of furniture, like a bookshelf or something like that inside the studio. And what this is going to do is give a more muted and distant sounding drum recording that's going to make the drums sound like they're in a bigger room than they actually are. I've got a small closet inside my studio where I place my room mic and here's what my drums sound like from that mic. If we fade that room track into the rest of the drum mix, here's what that sounds like. That room track really adds a lot of depth and vibe to the drums and helps glue together the sound of the close mics and the isolated cymbals from the overheads. Third step to the process is possibly the most important and it's as simple as this. Make sure your drums sound good. It's as simple as that. Don't go recording out of tune drums with five-year-old heads and sticks that look like this. No amount of creative acoustic treatment or mic placement is going to help fix a crappy sounding drum kit. Focus on getting a great drum sound first that is actually worth recording. This doesn't mean that you need to go drop 10 grand on a crazy pro kit. In fact, if you're going to invest some money in your drums, I'd recommend investing in good cymbals first because your cymbals are your cymbals. You can make an inexpensive drum kit sound pretty good with good tuning, good heads, and good clean sticks, but you can't do a lot to change the sound of your cymbals. I'm not gonna get into drum tuning and drum head selection in this video. There's already a million good videos that cover those things on YouTube, but I do recommend that before every recording session to give your drums a proper tune and make sure that they're sounding as good as they can. Don't be afraid to use any dampening for eliminating some of those unwanted overtones as well. For drumsticks, I also have a dedicated pair of sticks that I only use for recording sessions. That way I know they're not going to be all chewed up from practice or from gigging. Having clean sticks will honestly help a ton for bringing out good tone, good attack, and just a good sound from your drums. So to recap, first thing is we want to deaden the sound of the room with proper acoustic treatment. Second thing is we want to be creative with our mic placements, so a combo of our close miking, overhead mics for cymbals only, and the wildcard room mic. And third thing is we want our drums to sound as good as possible so that the sound is actually worth recording. Putting these three steps into practice is going to help a ton and it's going to help bring bigger and livelier sounding drum recordings to your songs no matter the size of your room. I hope you find the video helpful, and if you do, be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button to follow along for future videos. I really appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one.